We're going to pull up the data from NFL.com, look at the next-gen stat charts, and look at the trends from Week 9. We're going to go over favorite running backs and cover whether or not we need to pick them up off waivers, dump them to waivers, look at the trends. Maybe we need to buy them. Maybe we need to sell them. Maybe we need to do nothing. But we're going to be looking at these running backs, see what we need to do with them, after week nine, because there are some trends we need to look at, but what you need to do right now is click that subscribe button. Tap it with your finger on your phone. Click it with your mouse on the computer. We're deep diving these players every single day. We're looking at stash plays, lottery tickets, guys off waivers, helping you set your lineups, and everything else. Click that button. Stop missing out. Let's look at the 10 running backs for this week on our Monday here. And look who it is. Look who it is. Look who showed up this week. You never thought I'd be doing this, huh? On our Monday trend video, Keaton Mitchell's here. Keaton Mitchell showed off what he could do. And look at the chart here. Those long runs there in the third quarter. Not mop-up time, third quarter time. So he was in there against a defense trying to stay in it at that time it was still out of hand a bit it was still that way but still keaton mitchell with that 4-3 speed and that's what we were seeing with this prospect anyways this is how it's going to have to happen to begin with him getting touches late in the game and him just blowing up like this or injuries happening and him getting the starting reps but what we saw from him was a very explosive running back who can house it on a drop of a dime or get you a tremendous long gain on a drop of a dime, and that's what he does. He climbed this depth chart very quickly in the offseason, showed off the goods in preseason, and then he was hurt. He was on the DL for a bit. He was, and then he got hurt again, and then we did not know how long he was going to be out. Then he comes back. He finally gets his opportunity, and he runs with it, no pun intended, and this is what we get. Going forward, he's going to be getting touches. It might increase throughout the weeks. We're going to have to watch that. But now he's the big guy off the waiver wire. Everyone's running to him. And the waiver wire sucked these last few weeks. Maybe a month or so. It sucked. So it made it even easier to hold a stash like this. Because really there's nobody to look at. That's why we're talking about Zach Charbonnet so much. Donta Foreman. The waiver wire dandy here. Gotten 20 carries for 83 yards. Scored 8.3 PPR fantasy points. The thing about this, he got touches. He got the workload. He got the opportunity. Got you 83 yards. Something you would expect with him off and on. And then maybe some splash games. But we know Deonta Foreman's getting the touches. He's getting the workload. He's getting the opportunity. And you know what? You never know what the week's going to turn out for you. Because... He has to cross the goal line. He's never going to be a guy who catches 10 balls in a game, 8 balls in a game. He might catch a few balls here and there, score a touchdown off a short swing pass or so, or get you a couple rumbles on the goal line. You never know what you're going to get, but at least you know you're going to be getting some touches, and he should be a big part of this offense going forward. Roshan Johnson's probably not dead. He's a guy you need to pay attention to still. Probably a ramp-up period. He's probably going to need that one. He's a rookie coming back from that injury. And Deontay Foreman, although it wasn't super high, he's been running high. He's had some good weeks. He's been holding it down. And the hot hand will be hot until it's not hot. And that's how it is. But he's getting touches. Now we're looking at Chuba Hubbard. And the same thing. You can just count on him getting touches. And what he will do with it, you'll never know. But he's getting work in the passing game. Scoring you 10.7 PPR fantasy points here. So he's got you a little bit of something. He's getting some touches. If he's on waivers, you're going to pick him up. And you're looking to get some touches out of him. And you're wanting to see what's going to happen with those. Maybe he gets you that touchdown. Maybe he catches a few balls like he did in this game. To ramp up that point total for you. But again, he's getting touches. You can risk on that. Looks like he's every other week, but he's also having some bust weeks as well. But again, if you're not getting touches, it's hard to score fantasy points. And you know he's getting some touches, and you can bank on that part. And after that, it's a risk. Keonta Ingram, he's dead. He's dead. I mean, it's against the Browns. You should expect that against the Browns, especially a subpar running back like this. But eight yards still, he's dead. He's not doing anything. He scored nine points on the season with this opportunity. He's not running with it. And he's not living up to expectations or whatever expectations that were there. 
He was the dandy off the waiver wire. He was the guy we were talking about, like, hey, just watch this backfield. Take the cheaper one, see what happens. Keontae Ingram's dead, though. He's dead. That's the trend. Kenneth Walker, you didn't want any of these running backs. You didn't want him. You didn't want Charbonnet. Like we said in the multiple videos that we did, it was probably going to end up being like a 60-40 split. It was close to that. It was close to that in the touches. Maybe more like 70-30 to 30 this week. Something like that. I didn't really add it up. Kenneth Walker got the workload. He led the backfield in touches. Nine carries, 16 yards against a tough run defense. And that's how it works sometimes. And also the game script said, hey, we got to throw the ball now. We got to throw it most of the time. And that's what they had to do. So Kenneth Walker a little bit lower. So the trend here is you might be able to buy Kenneth Walker on the cheap. One, we had all that talk about Zach Charbonnet. And the reason why I did all those videos is because there was all that talk about Zach Charbonnet. That kind of drives down the price a little bit, maybe in negotiations. And then two, you got this game here. Maybe you can get something worked out. More than likely not because we're smarter than that to, to give somebody off for the cheap when we got a good running back like this. But we got 10 fantasy points in two weeks off two amazing run defenses. So that's something you could capitalize off of. And you always kick the tires and see what happens. Ramondre Stevenson. If you did not get that long gain there for a touchdown, it, it would have been another bad week. It would have been another bad one. But the trend lines here, he's been good three of his last four weeks after he's been casted to hell. So the thing about that is... We look at that part, and we see that he's been trending kind of on the up, still a little bit volatile, and you can't trust the Patriots because you just can't. He's the guy to play the matchups with, and you're just not going to like it. You're just going to have to eat this food and not like it. You could try and trade him, but you're going to have to package him away to get something better. That's something that's going to happen. The markets aren't as high as what you think in the trade markets. But again, he's giving you a little something. You're just not going to trust it from week to week. B. John Robinson. Now we got the down game, and it's Arthur Smith, and we know what's happening here. Looking at the touches, we got 11 carries for 51 yards, four targets, two catches, eight yards, and we did not get a score here, and the point total was at 5.9. Not the greatest. Not the greatest. We also lost a fumble, and sometimes the cookie crumbles like that. And imagine it this way. You're playing under Arthur Smith, and you're still finding a way to create fantasy production. So when we get a new coaching staff here, it looks like it's going to be wheels up for B. John Robson. That sounds like what's going to be trending. You don't want to hear that for 2023, but you also know he's doing some stuff. He's getting you some points. He's being all right. He does have the upside still. He's still being used in the passing game. B. John Robinson is still the truth. Aaron Jones is healthy. He's getting workload. Is it glorious? Not really. But we're getting the touchdown. We're getting a shit ton of carries. We're getting targets. We're getting workload, and that's what matters. We had a very, very low scoring season. It started slow due to injury. Now it looks like we're back. Now it looks like we can kind of use him now. Are we going to trust it in the beginning? No. But now he's getting touches. He's getting workload. That's good to see for the future. Devin Singletary, he got touches. He got touches. We did not know what was going to happen with that, but we did know this was a bad game script going into it. We did know you want to pass on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they are a pass funnel. This team does not pass to running backs. He did get two targets, which is okay, but teams do not want to run on Tampa Bay when they know they can heave it against their pass defense. We see this week in and week out. This was the matchup I said that you can make stacks off of for DFS. And the low ownership rate in the tournaments could allow you to sneak up in the rankings and make some extra money, especially you made the right stacks, played around with the lineups, and entered multiple lineups from this game. I hope you did because it hit the over. Even if it didn't hit the over, I expected probably about 80 pass attempts by both teams in this game combined. I expected that. I expected this to be a passing game. But again, you started Devin Singletary because you needed touches at running back. You needed touches at running back. And maybe the Texans could have got on the goal line. You could have got lucky with one of those touches. We did not. We got 13 carries for 26 yards. You don't run on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You throw on them. That's a trend you need to remember. Now we're looking at Royce Freeman. 12 carries, 32 yards. You need him to cross the goal line. You need any of these running backs on the Rams going forward to cross the goal line to get fantasy production. 
or have a game where they whimsically get enough passing work to be fantasy relevant. That being said, you're not trusting them. But you know touches are coming from this offense, and some people need to gamble on that. And that's the sad part of fantasy football. Some people are hurting so much at running back. You look at the start-sit questions, you're like, oh, no. Oh, no. There's no real answer because we know it's all bad, but I'll try my best. And Royce Freeman's one of those guys. You just hope he crosses the goal line. He got you a 10 spot. But still, we know what's going on. Those are the 10 trends at the running back position for Week 9. Again, this is from the Next Gen Stat Sports Charts from NFL.com. If you want to see more of those running backs, just go over there. Check that out. But on Mondays, we go over that because the advanced metrics don't come out till Tuesday. At least the ones that I like, there are some out. And then for the Monday night games, they don't come out till Wednesday. The ones that I like, at least to look at these players, and I want to have all of them to be able to filter sort. We're going to cover the waiver wire really heavy tomorrow, so you need to stay tuned for that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stop missing out on those, and we're going to help you set your lineups and everything else. Full service fantasy football YouTube channel because we help you out with college fantasy, dynasty Devi. We also cover high school recruiting in the summer. Very active all year round. You don't want to miss out. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.